I have been looking forward to this all day oh. in this brutally hot day in the East Coast. I don't know what it's like for you, Desmond, out in the West, in the uh, mountain times, how the weather was for you. But um, it was a crazy day of weather. But we're here. We're in our air condition. We're faced. We're uh, zooming and we're potting. And most importantly, we are here to cover the NBA finals. Now, it's fair to say that this has been at least the conference finals were a little bit underwhelming, even though we had a sweep and a game seven. Um, all in all, it's been an sweep. interesting time. So we are going to break it all down. We're going to talk about how we got here. And then we're going to talk about the matchup. The NBA Finals starts today, Thursday, June 2nd. The Golden State Warriors out of the West, the Boston Celtics out of the East. And yeah, let's get to it with the best productive NBA crew around. Desmond Price is back from the dead of the flu and all that. It's great <laughs> to see you, Desmond. How are you? Ah, uh, man, you know, feeling a little bit sick, but it's only 65 degrees out here in Missoula. So, you know, nice and cool over here. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me back on. Oh, great to see you, man. And thank you for pulling through for us. Alex Rinelli, yo, getting his Brad Pitt munching on. It's great to see you. Love what you're doing with New Canaan High School, even though me and Bars hate New Canaan. But that's <laughs> that's uh, just a territorial thing. But you're doing a great job there. How's <laughs> how's you? How are you doing, Alex? Uh, doing good. A lot of sunburn. I've been painting out like a, a mother effer for about six, seven days, but um, had a nice weekend off um, Memorial Day grilling. So I hope you guys had a Memorial Day week uh, weekend. That was awesome, too. And happy to be back. Excellent. Oh, excellent. Fresh Faces New Ideas host David Bach is here as well. And also, don't forget that Desmond Price hosts Independent Thought available on all podcasts and platforms and Twitch as well. Bach, I know you've had quite an interesting couple of weeks with all the news taking place in America. How are you doing? I'm ho I'm sure you're glad to take a nice break from that. Dude, I, I honestly only streamed like twice in the last like week or so. I, <laughs> I was just busy. Um, uh, there's a lot going on. I, I'm going to have to cover a lot of it because I basically got into a, to a conversation with somebody and that like, cut off my stream halfway through when I was talking about um, I was covering about like the first day when we found out how bad the police response to this was and it's gotten like crazier since um, but yeah I am the uh, fresh faces new ideas and you can find me on uh, twitch.tv slash fresh faces new ideas and you can find me on twitter at faces ideas I stream usually 7 p.m to 9 p.m EST and I uh, talk politics and then I uh, I drop uh, basketball knowledge occasionally Excellent. Well, it's great to take a break from the madness and we can focus on the great series ahead. And then we have Bars the God, one of the most talented culinary artists in this Easter seaboard, probably the world. Also a great guy and a lot of fun and great company with a great head on his shoulder. Bars, how are you? I am doing actually really well. Uh, things have been going up. Things have been going up for me. Uh, I told y'all the good news like a couple months back. So like Thursday, everything's official. You know, your boy's going to be straight up Citizen Kane in this hub. And, <laughs> and um, I'm just glad to see everybody here. You know, shit is going good. Uh, it's hot as fuck. I worked all Memorial weekend. It was hot as fuck too. Uh, I worked Memorial Day, but I had fun when I got off. So it was like, well, yesterday uh, or Monday. So yeah. Life. Well, look at that. Everybody is health. Oh, well, everybody is here together on a way to good health. And uh, yeah, let's get man. to it. Oh, hey, Matt, don't forget to shout out. I got bars, baby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly plug yourself real quick, bars. You can find all my music on SoundCloud, Reflow Bars. You can check me on um, Instagram, Insomniacs. I'll plug it again at the end, give you a nice proper spelling, but just know that we don't sleep over here. That's right. All right. That's we have gotten as intro we as we can. So let's talk about what brings us here today. We have been documenting, documenting and following the entire NBA postseason. <coughs> I think it's fair to say it started off pretty hot in the first round, dwindled down in the conference semis, the uh, conference finals itself, as I mentioned, though it had a seven game series. There were a lot of blowouts within it, except in game seven. And then the Mavs just uh, fell flat on their face and lost in four. 
against the Warriors. But here's our matchup right here. The NBA Finals 2022 is the Golden State Warriors versus the Boston Celtics. Before we get into anything regarding breaking down the matchups, eulogizing the losers, and um, having fun with this topic, how do you feel initially about this matchup? I feel it's fair to say that some people felt that this was a possible NBA Finals from the start. We get to see this Celtics team who has been so close so many years with terrible playoff losses, and they finally won the East once and for all with new coach Ume Ukudome, Ukudoma, Ukud- Ume Udoka. U- Ume Udoka. <laughs> hard into that. But we have Good that. Um, then we have the Warriors without KD and Good with catch. a Thank returning you, Clay Thompson and with adding players like Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins, they are finally back in the finals. And here's an interesting fact. The Warriors under Steve Kerr are 18 and 0 in series against the West, and they have a chance to now win their fourth NBA finals under him. So wow. it's a huge, there's lots of storylines coming into it. I think this is a really cool matchup. I think it's great for the NBA East coast versus West coast. I think it's going to be highly rated. And I think we're going to get some good basketball. So how do we feel about the matchup initially? I will throw it to the floor. Okay. Let me just jump in real quick, right? Fuck computers. Fuck robots. Uh, That's put us on way, 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 way long ago about how this shit was going to go. And he said a computer predicted the Celtics to hold this shit down. And fuck computers, lo and behold, here it goes. Um... The Celtics are holding this shit down, but weren't you the one who said that the Warriors were going to be in the finals anyway? Though I think you might have been the only one to say that. Listen, I called that from the jump. I Stephen A. Smith that shit, <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I will say, I will say, I feel good about this matchup because I love Clay Thompson as a player. He's a great player, phenomenal. Jason Tatum's also great too. Um, and it just comes down to which one of them dog it well, I'm wanting more, which one of these two dogs wanted more. Clay's coming back. It's Jason's first. Let's do it. Love it. Couldn't see more competitive matchup right now. Now, are we, uh, we making picks from the get, or are we just talking about our overall feelings right now? Like overall feelings with the matchup, with how it got here, and then we will do the picks at the end. Okay, okay. Just wanted to, to double check. Um, well... I feel like I feel like this is probably the the best series we were gonna get, uh, just given the how like all the injuries kind of played out throughout the playoffs. Um, Boston Great. is the most complete team in the East right now. Uh, I think after Middleton went out, I could I was feeling I feel pretty comfortable saying that. And on the West side, I mean, the Warriors, you know, just for obvious reasons, are the most polished team. I mean, they actually play like real basketball. You know, I, I mean that as like a dig at all these other like teams right now who basically just play the whole like, let's have one person penetrate and then have four people spot up and shoot, which is kind of yeah. just boring to watch. Where like the Warriors actually will run multiple screens, have people cut through the lane. They'll actually run plays in the offensive set. They actually will run real basketball plays. It's, it's almost like, you know, it's crazy. So, yeah, I love watching them play. I, I appreciate their style of play. I like I think Celtics have a legit like true cohesive team like they actually play real defense and i'm just excited to actually watch a good nba series we've had so many years of just like you know um these super teams go up against other super teams i think it'll just be nice to watch just two teams who are relatively evenly matched go up against each other see how it goes right yeah no i i I think also like golden state had like a pretty easy run to this to this uh finals they they played arguably the worst team in the west um with with was Jokic by himself and oh. then round two yeah because it was it was him and like four people off the street um, it was, him it was and basically nobody. the Celtics team from, it was the Celtics team from last year where was where was uh, uh where was Tim Hardaway are you talking about the Mavericks though you know what the Mavericks that was the were? Mavericks He's talking about oh, the Nuggets. Right now. I'm talking about the Nuggets. Yeah. Oh, he's talking about the Shit, Nuggets. Sorry. Team. Oh, fuck me. Wait. Yeah. The Warriors and started then round off at... two. 
I thought it was the other way around. The Grizzly. They played the um, Grizzlies. I don't remember first. who they played. Oh, they played the they played uh the Grizzlies. The Nuggets first. No, they played the yeah, Nuggets. Yeah, and then like oh yeah, wait. And Memphis. The Grizzlies were round two. Yeah, you were right. I'm wrong. My bad, dummy. Yes, <laughs> you were saying Bach. My bad. <clears throat> um, sorry, my my internet has just been dying the last couple of days. Uh, I'll, I'll um, pick. I'll pick yeah, you like, up until you come back. <laughs> no, I, I it's it's good. I could like keep talking. My stream just crashed, but uh, I, I keep I coming in and out of this. Um, they got they got Jaw was hurt for what three games, two games. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they got this Dallas team. And look, in in comparison to the Celtics team, Luca's better than anyone on the Celtics, but. Like after that, where is the next time you pick a Dallas player over a Celtic player? Fifth? I'm gonna argue Luca is better offensively than almost everyone on the Celtics. He's better yeah, than everyone. Everyone on the Celtics. I Luka's would better say than Jason everybody Tatum. on the Celtics. And Jason Brown and Jalen Brown has shown that he can score. And he plays defense. Luca can't be better. <laughs> well, that was that was my point. Opinion. That was that was my point. That like the Celtics team is better than this Dallas team. Like I, the oh, fact that, that they beat this, the Phoenix team that was like the odds on favorite because of just like how historically good they were. And then they, they collapsed and now the team is probably going to blow it all up. I mean, Golden State was, you know, they, they only needed what one clay game. They got one clay game in game five or, or and that was like it. Like they, they didn't even need it because they got Jordan Poole doing mini clays. Andrew Wiggins finally figured out how to play basketball, like like an oh. actual basketball player. Oh. And then even like this is this is gonna I think they're gonna win. Um they're also less banged up than Boston. Like Boston's pretty banged up. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I think in the general sense, I most of what you said is true. It's it's they've had an easier path. They haven't played any of their opponents in any of the three rounds at full health and full strength. And even though Golden State's had their share of injuries, they've really been able to kind of walk through the Western Conference um, with no resistance. Um, I think that easily Dallas, like their second best player, isn't even in the top seven compared to Boston um, when you put those two rosters up side by side. So I think that they're going to get tested, especially out on the perimeter. I think between the three of them, Brown, Tatum, and um, Smart, they're going to lock guys up, and they're really going to disrupt the passing lanes with guys moving. Um, it's really going to come down to who's the third guy for um, Golden State and who's the third guy for Boston. Because if you can get 20-plus from Marcus Smart like you did in Game 7, I don't know how you beat them, especially when you have Al Horford um, playing his A game and you keep Robert Williams out of foul trouble. I don't think that they're going to be – it's going to be a really hard out um, whether you're playing home or away. So I'm fully expecting seven. And I think that um, this is the best that – this is the best team that Golden State's going to be seeing all year. I want to ask but, one thing yeah. to put into an account, though. I'm sorry, Bob, you want to say your point? Well, the, the I think the injuries do it because we don't know how much Robert Williams is playing and we don't know what Smart's availability is going to be. I think mm-hmm. that's going to shift the whole thing. <laughs> Can I ask, so game seven, we're going to just quickly switch gears and just talk about the way that Boston got here. Boston almost had one of the worst collapses in a game seven. Next to the sun's falling down. It got really bad for a second. And with so many factors in there, and you had Marcus Smart taking a million shots and then um, just some bad turnovers down the stretch. Do you feel that that has an effect going into this game, playing poorly in game seven and just being able to pull it off? And kudos to them because they won game seven in Miami. But, hey, maybe in an alternate world, Jimmy Butler hits that three, even though he's notorious poorly. He is a poor – he is notorious for being a poor three-point shooter. And, you know, that could have gone either way. And I'm sure that must have been tough for you to check out um, bars too. But in our chat, you were more – still giving taps off to the heat. But do you think the Celtics bad performance at game seven can transition into game one or two coming into this game? And they are also on the road for games one or two against Golden State. Was that directed at bars? Oh, I was just throwing it again, throwing it out. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll just jump in here then. Um, oh, thank you. I was lagging. 
Yeah, I th- I think I feel pretty strongly about this. Um, on one hand, it was a good thing that the Celtics won because they, you know, they have spared us what was going to be a, a, a pretty like boring finals otherwise. Because <laughs> uh, hey, I'm look, man, we're going to get to the eulogies, the eulogies in a second, but you know, the Heat have one and a half good players right now. Let's just be honest about it. Um, that was going to be a massacre if the Heat had somehow found a way to pull that off. But with the same with the same time, uh, the Celtics, I don't know what they're going to take into this next series because you barely squeaked by a Bucks team who wasn't playing at full strength. Then you squeak by a Heat team who has only one player who's willing to take shots, uh, who actually can make shots. And now you're going up against probably one of the most polished NBA teams that we've seen over the last like 30 years. Uh, I mean, they better bring their praise within the San Francisco as far as I'm concerned, because I don't think they really are going to win this series, but I'll, I'll get I'll get into that a little bit later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to jump in right after that. And I'm gonna say, they're going to get blown out in one of the first two games. They're, they're, gonna, they're just going to happen. They played 12 games in the last 23 days. Like, they're going to – one of those two games, the Celtics are just going to get blown out just because they haven't had enough rest or somebody's going to get hurt – or something, and it's going to change like how people view this series. But like, I mean, his, like over the last couple of years, they're the only team with a winning record against Golden State. The regular season, like, I think, season, since bro. the dynasty run, run the regular started. season, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. obviously they haven't played bro. in the playoffs because it's basically. It I, I know, but like, we don't judge regular years. season games the, the same way. Like, come on now. So but what, it, but it, like, it gives you a confidence years. level. Like if if you're the team that has a winning record against Golden, I mean, obviously, I don't know if this is factored in the last two years where Golden State was basically like the worst team in the league for for a while. Um, but like that that's something. And look, yeah, this Heat team had they had problems. I mean, um, Steve Kerr has played as a coach. He has coached 23 playoff series. He's 22 and one. I mean, let's just can we just talk about it for a second? That's that's kind of a big fucking deal. He's got three Hall of Famers, four with KD. They had four. They had four. I mean, the games. Celtics. Put Luke Walton up there and win forty games in a row. Bro, I mean, the Celtics I mean, are going no. through it, man. They're gonna they're gonna need a miracle to actually like legitimately even push this to a game seven, as far as I'm concerned. No, Iggy Dollar's going. Iggy Dollar's no. going to the Hall of Fame. Oh, hold on. So Desmond, let me push back a little bit on that because I don't necessarily disagree with you in terms of the actual outcomes. Um, of these games. The only issue is we don't really know what we're getting from Golden State. So yeah, they're well seasoned and well polished of right. any team the past 10, 15 years. But the thing is they haven't really been tested all all um all playoff long. And I think that Boston has a little more wherewithal, even though they've had some um fortunate breaks go their way. I am strongly suspect of how the Warriors will play in Boston. Because I think that Boston has a real home court advantage. Unlike some other teams in the NBA who their fan base doesn't show up or yeah. their players don't play that well at home. Everyone on Boston plays better at home. Their fans are in it. I mean, when they were down by like 15, I think what was it like in game four or something like that? I mean, their crowd was still going crazy. So, I mean, like that's going to be a real test. I expect the Warriors to lose at least one, if not both games in Boston come games three and four. So, I mean, I don't think this is going to be like a, a cakewalk to the finish line, but I still think the Warriors have more than enough uh, to win this series. I, I think it, I, I don't think the, I don't think the Celtics are consistent enough. I mean, because they have more talent than that heat team and they somehow still had to push it to a game seven. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, that, that shouldn't have been that hard of a series for them. I mean, obviously they're just inconsistent as a team. Yeah, no, no that's the, the thing. Their, their end game stuff, they, they like don't have good answers for their end game stuff. I mean, like, to be fair, if we like go back and look at this run, they literally needed like a miracle a couple of times. They needed the best uh, um, game that uh, um, Al Horford Mind literally you. ever played in his life to beat a Milwaukee team missing its second best player. You, like we've to- you, you've mentioned it a couple of times. This Heat team had Jimmy Butler. And the ghost of Bam Adebayo, because literally any time he plays against somebody who's like slightly physical, he he turns into a chicken shit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, then- that was embarrassing on his part. All right, so I'll say I'll say this: um, Duncan Robinson, regular season hero, nobody in the playoffs. Tyler Hero, I have questions yeah, for him. Nothing, they had nothing going no on. They couldn't. 
uh, his what it, like he had a groin injury. They couldn't do anything when it mattered. Uh, groins, groins keep people down. Um, Bam did have a thirty-one point game, if I'm correct, though. Um, Jimmy one. scored two forty-point games back to back. Yeah, no like, one's questioning Jimmy. Like his shot selection, like I said earlier, like I said in the chat. Um, I, like after watching it over and over again, I feel a little slightly more different. But honestly, best player on our team. He had to have the ball in his hands. Yeah, it was Al Horford. Um, there could have been a chance he got the foul. There could have been a chance the refs was like, let him play. And he don't get the foul. Um, taking that shot was what he had to do. Um, honestly, I'm glad we went down at seven. Um, because we were going to get destroyed by a Warrior team. Like, I, I honestly seen us getting swept. But, like... Jimmy trying to pull out, still scoring 40, can't do it. Um, this Warriors team, damn, they're immaculate when it comes to, like, how they play. You got to look at it, like, Draymond at the small, and then that who they can run on the – the other four they can run on the court during that time. Poole, Steph, Clay, like, Wiggins. It gets nasty. Wiggins is playing like – Wiggins is playing like a number one draft pick. Finally. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was on trash team. What did you want him to do? Mm-hmm. Like, not play trash. <laughs> you're right. You fucking right. You can't even be mad. <laughs> but um, this Celtic team has a lot of holes. Um, their defense is solid because they can throw a lot of big ass bodies at you, and they have a lot of height, um, and size in their depth chart. If you really look at it, um, especially at those lower positions, even fucking Marcus Smart is pretty big. Like, so you kind of got to look at it. Um, Marcus Smart really stepped into his role as a point guard. Like, now this year more than ever, I would say, and really emerged as a player that you really got to look at and watch. Defensive player of the year, doubt it. But, like, um, he does have a good uh, statistical, I don't know, he got good stats when he guards Steph Curry. If he could hold Steph Curry to under 26 points, then he might have something, says my boy Jordy. My boy Jordy says that it's possible they can get swept by the, by 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 Golden State. So, mm. okay, see, okay, that's the one thing I don't see. I just I do not see any scenario in which Boston doesn't get either Game Three or Game Four. I, I think I'd almost guarantee right now, in like a little like gentleman side bet here on the panel, that Boston takes Game Three. Mm. Yeah, I don't think they. I don't think they get swept. I think they get one. I think I'll be willing to put down eight dollars, eight dollar bet right now. I'll double and, down that eight dollar bet and say that Boston takes game one. Oh, I mean, yes. I, I, I'm I'm interested in that bet. All right, I'm, we do we do have bet. it recorded, so you can't take your word <laughs> back if we want some wagering. Um, I got Boston <laughs> taking game one. Um, I a hundred percent guy Golden State taking game one. I, I'll I'll take that bet. I got I got Boston taking game one in uh, in a very nail bitey fashion. If it, I, I will talk to you in the group chat come Thursday night. Uh, all Tonight. right, let's do it. Great. Let's do it. As we should add, um, it's great to add some sports gambling here as we are legalizing it through certain states. So thank you, Supreme have, Court. I guess. <laughs> so wait, they did something good. <laughs> In this sense, I bet I did one bet on, you know, I do do a bet every day responsibly, of course. I only I finally hit one of my parlays in game five. It was a it was or no, what was it? It was game either game three, four or five. And I just betted the three points. Um, it was Jordan pool one and a half, Steph three and a half, Clay two and a half. And um one more, and I hit it, and I picked the Golden State money line. That's the one, but as they say, that rarely happens. You lose more than you win. But regardless about besides me bragging, um, just on this and talking about the um, – just to finish up eulogizing the heat, as uh, Bars was saying. Yeah, I think also with Jimmy Butler, he I don't think he wanted to go into overtime. I think might as well do or die. I mean, he, it was just him versus Al Horford. Maybe he drives the lane, and maybe he gets a three-point play out of it. Maybe he doesn't. 
but that's just part of the game. And I think now more than ever, it shows that the Heat need to make a, another move. Um, Victor Oladipo has been a presence, but he's not the same Victor Oladipo he is. Tyler Hero is fine, but um, I don't think you can trust him as it's their two guys, teams. And um, Bach already made it made a point with uh, Bam Adebayo, who has a hard time keeping up with players who really defend well. Yeah, can we can we talk about this? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, this is this is not the no. first time this has happened. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of like the first time it's happened in this direct a way. Like, it happened the last time they played the Sixers. Um, but he can't handle. Like, Bam is a really good player, but like if you you match him with somebody who's like long or like physical with him. He, he shrinks. There was a, I don't know if you guys read the ringer piece where they compared where they were talking about um, Bam and Grant Williams. Well, like even in high school, Grant Williams was bullying him. <laughs> um, Like I didn't know Bam that he was the number one player in North Carolina at that point. Like he's one of those guys who is like really talented, but they, they're very cerebral in the way that they do it. Like, yeah, it's almost a like mental game. Battle. And like, well, look, we three years ago we were talking like, yo, how good would Bam be if he knew how to shoot? Listen, listen, Bam's problem is correct psychologically. He's a big dude. Maybe he could put a bit more pounds on, but like, all right. So when I play ball, street ball, I I, primi- I primarily go for power forward center positions because I'm a big dude. There's dudes bigger than me. You can't let them back you down. It's a psychological thing at that point. Once they back you down, they thinking it's just going post up all game. You know what I'm saying? Once they see Bam, it's a little squishy, they're going to attack him. Or they notice that he's not going to attack defensively once they start throwing bodies on him. Like, his defense could have been a bit more in that game seven for sure. Um, it is what it is, man. I don't know. Bam, Bam, Bam need to get out of his own way. But like, where I, I couldn't. The thing I couldn't understand was when you watch game four, you know, Bam came out and he got into the post and he asked for the ball and he did that. Well, it was like almost like 10 out of like 15 possessions in a row to start the game. He started off the game going like eight for 12 from the post. He was backing everybody down. Didn't matter who covered him. Came out in the second half of game four, stopped doing that. And it felt like every game after that, he didn't do it either. And so I'm like, I agree. wait, you just proved to yourself that you could back these dudes down. You were shooting at a crazy high percentage. You had like 25 points in the first half of game four. And then you just abandoned that for the rest of the series. And game seven, he couldn't wait to get the ball out of his own hands. And I'm like, I'm like, bam, like you're bigger than these dudes. What are you doing? It, it didn't make any sense. Like, obviously, in his own mind, he was shook for some reason. Game I couldn't seven. figure out why. Game seven, Bam's taking the ball down the court, literally. He got the space. Take this big nigga. What are you doing? It's Al Horford. Pull the foul. Like, they needed to get them in, in foul trouble. They needed to get them in foul trouble. They won that game, getting um, Jalen Brown into foul trouble. Kyle Lowry was also in foul trouble in that game, with game six. But, like, you got to get – you got to like, – a team like – a team like the Celtics, it's physical. Their weakness is physicality. You bring physical back to them, get them in foul trouble, and then, boom, what they got. A rotation of dudes. You got Peyton. You got what? Peyton Pritchard. That's his name. Yeah, backup guard. Yeah. Well, you also got Derek he, White though. Uh, Derek White's going to the finals. Uh, I who? count this as a win. Who? Derek White. Derek White is oh, good. Get your Spurs fan out of here. <laughs> he made the difference. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah, he played very physical. They should have held him down more. Kyle Lowry did come off of an injury. That held them back. Yeah, like like um, that's it. Can, like where does Boston go? Like these are weird teams because like Miami and 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 Dallas, they're both kind of in a similar situation. Uh, uh, arguably, like Dallas isn't a better one because Luke is better than everyone in Miami. Um, and he's okay. going to be under. What does that is. mean if you don't got no one else to play on your team for you? Like, right. That's I. Mean, that's why it's if understandable. Everyone else is a no show. So like both of these teams have the same problem. Like where are you going to get more help? Like they, like I mean, the Miami just needs more, Donovan just needs more like rotational help. I mean, they got a good star and Jimmy Butler, and they got a couple other pieces I mean, on that look, team that work. They, they can just trade need to, some dudes now. Like, I mean, like, Robinson's got to go. Hero might exp- have I think to you go. could trade a hero. I think you could I trade. Hero. Not, I mean, honestly, I would keep I would Oladipo. I think he's going to get better. Oladipo and on the defensive end, he was playing real nice in that series. He was getting steals like crazy. 
Listen, he's definitely a shock trooper. He's definitely captain of the shock troopers. Send that man off the bench. He's going to do it. Tyler Hero, I would maybe, I don't know, man. Like, I don't want to get rid of him just in case he has that upside that we've been looking for. You know what I'm saying? I know okay, if but like, said, there's like, if you could flip, like, so, like, who are you, you're, you're looking for like a real star, a, like a secondary star. So you're looking at for, if here's the guy you're trading, um, if I'm trading Tyler Hero, I'm a package Tyler Hero with somebody else um, for uh, Donovan Mitchell, CJ McCollum. You're not or... getting CJ. They're not trading CJ. Not they CJ, might trade CJ. They're not trading CJ. They're gonna they be. They're gonna be. A, they're gonna be a dark horse finals contender if Zion is in fat next year. Hey, listen. Zion's first of fat all, next year. Why is this, Why are we even talking about this? <laughs> First of all, he's not fat. He's just he's just a few pounds over you know over the average weight. My you man know, has beaten Charles Barkley and eating cookouts since he's been there. That no. boy's been eating bananas, shrimp and grits, and he's been yo Zion just got that's all muscle weight. You need to calm down with that fat talk. Also, you're just mad because uh, you can't well, get in the gym and put up the pounds like he can. Okay, I I guess I guess I'm also mad or that he's doing the same thing that I'm doing right now, not playing ball. I mean, he, is kind of, he is working the system right now. It's like, how can I sit out and keep getting paid? Getting that's, on, paid. that's some Kawhi liner, you know, like next level stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, Kawhi too. Yeah. Anyways. You know, to wrap yeah. this portion up though, and as Box said, clearly, uh, and that's the, you, they just need to add more players, whether with this upcoming free agency dra- class, it, whether it's the draft, whether you want to have GMs just come up with some scheme to bring players in. Do we ultimately see this as a realistic possibility or are they going to just sit on it and see where it goes from there? I mean, the Heat are always trying to win. So I can imagine they're going to, they're going to do what they got to do. I mean, they can mm-hmm. at least shore up one roster spot and finally let Udonis Haslam go out to pasture. <laughs> oh, yeah. Grace, it aids gracefully, old dog. Listen, I got one thing to say um, about the Mavericks real quick about their eulogy because I realized I didn't give one, but I'll lead right into what I feel like they should do in free agency. Um, fuck the Maybe. Maverick. What are we talking about? Like, all they have is Luca. It's time. It's time to build around him. If he's gonna be your piece, it's time to build around him. To be fair, I they mean, were trying, and then they, you know, they had to spend the two years trying the Porzingis thing, which on paper made sense, and then Porzingis where, is where, made out of where is the paper walking, mache. Where, where is yeah. the walking beanpole? He's in. He's in Washington. Oh, they really? got the Spencer Dinwiddie game, so like. I don't know where they they really move. Like it's it's a Jalen Brunson signing trade is where they're gonna. Brunson is all right. Brunson's all right. Um, oh, about with with Josh. Look, they still have Josh Green. I I like Josh Green. I don't know what they're gonna do with him, but you know that's a that's a piece. They need they need a solid big man. Look, that can it's going. There's gonna be a bunch of teams. The floor a little bit. This is a team that's like like a Zach Levine target. Okay. There's like two I or three. Like I Zach Levine, Sorry. I don't think he's going back to Chicago. I think he's going to like Portland or I think the Los Spurs Angeles. want to get him. Oh, oh uh, my God. If he goes to Los Angeles, Jesus Christ. He's not going he, he would have to go like an assigned a trade. And and unless he goes LeBron's to, to uh, you know Clippers. LeBron's texting people all summer. LeBron's gonna mm-hmm. win a chip. They're they're apparently not trained Westbrook. That came out like yesterday. Oh, they did they did I, hire I saw that. Camp. So hey, that, that's interesting. What if the Nets have the ball? Nets, what if the Nets and Sean Marks has the balls to not extend Kyrie? And then I know he's under contract for one more season, but to get rid of that fat and that headache, what if they make a deal to one of these two teams that can use wait, him wait, more wait. anywhere? There's a bigger domino. Want him. Get rid There's of a bigger domino. I mean, which, who which wants is, Kyrie? That's a better question. Katie, Katie is the domino. Katie is going to want out. KD if, if Kyrie walks, Katie's going to gonna want to walk out. Katie's not going to stay on this team without, without, uh, without Kyrie. The, the, the unless they he's not gonna play with fucking you can tell KD he came here to with win ben a title Simmons. and he had James Harden Kyrie and now he's got Ben Simmons. KD That's it. To Dallas. He's gonna leave. Wow! I don't know can who, you imagine if that happens? Then if, it's the if ultimate Katie, fail if Katie of a franchise. Leaves, look, the, I don't look the the reporting on this is this team is a disaster. Um, clearly need a new coach. Team. It's a Texas. I don't team. think it's a coach thing. I think it's a. Uh, roster it's, construction. It's a. It's what happened when you put a whole bunch of wackos together. Like Katie and Kyrie are friends, and they could play together. James Harden is not like 
like, like to be fair, like the, if James Harden is not fat last year and Kyrie doesn't fall on, I think it was PJ Tucker's ankle, they probably win the title. And this uh, is a totally different conversation. Uh, even with KD on the line, but no, uh, no, because they they if, even if they had somebody other than like they they lost that Bucks team with a KD foot on the line by with KD by himself. No, 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 I don't want to hear that. If 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 Kevin Durant's foot is not on the line, he's going to be the only one probably I believe playing in that game because. Giannis pretty much willed them to like a victory, bro. Literally, Giannis just put his entire team on his back and sat the Suns down like a bow-legged stepchild. Like I, what they at? Like so, you think KD can do that? And KD disappears in a lot of quarters. Literally, just vanishes for like a whole quarter. He'll start hot, twenty-two points, uh, and then disappear the whole third quarter, and then pop up in the last five of the fourth. Um, and also just one more uh, move that could go in the offseason as we talk about the need of a big man, especially for Miami. Now, we know the Suns are about to break off, break apart. Rumors is Monty Williams really wants DeAndre Ayton out. What if you just do a Bam and uh, DeAndre Ayton trade one on one, a swap? Could no. that work or no? You don't want. Why that? would he want DeAndre Ayton? Oh my! God. I'm just reading. I'm just reading. Upgrade. Just the underlings that they have a lot of beef and tension with each other. Whether that's yeah, true no, or no. not, DeAndre Ayton's not coming. Probably not coming back. But like, you're they're not going to trade him. Like Miami's not going to trade Bam for him. Hell no, mm. not Bam. Bam has too much upside. If they're going to trade Bam, they're going to trade him for like Joel Embiid. Okay. And, you think the Sixers would trade Joel Embiid? If Joel Embiid asked <laughs> out, MVP years, if, how if good they... is the weed in New York right now? Yeah. <laughs> it must be fire. But I'm taking, I'm taking. Joel Embiid loves. He said it multiple times that he loves Jimmy Butler. And I know. I mean, that's why season. he was mad because we lost Jimmy Butler. I, I actually, I was clapping when I saw the footage of Jimmy Butler walking out of the Sixers yeah. arena, and he was like, "Tobias Harris over me." Like that, I brought a smile <laughs> to my face because I felt the exact same way, Jimmy. Yeah. Like, but the six like is ain't given to Joel. If, 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 if Jimmy told them, like, Pat, if Jimmy told Pat Riley, get me Embiid, and he told Embiid, hey, we just busted your ass with Fat Harden. Do you want Fat Harden for three more years? Joel but he Embiid, don't have anything to up? offer the Sixers for Joel. Who would we give up? So you would give up Bam? You would give up Hero? You would give up a bajillion bet draft picks? It's not Hell no. It's Hell not no. Can you imagine and then, that they, and then the you let Harden the walk. And you the only way Joel down. goes to Miami is through free agency. So we let Hero go. So the starting lineup would be Broken Laurie, Big Booty Laurie, uh, <laughs> Oladipo, Butler, Butler, Max Struess, and Oladipo. Who? I, I don't Struis know. Max Struess and B. Yeah, I don't know what position Max Struess plays. <laughs> I'm keeping PJ Tucker and having him start for like five minutes and then just keep rotating trash dudes in. I don't know. I'll get somebody like uh, I just get I don't know. I just get a decent power forward to fit in there. I think like if we could have afforded a Demonte Sabonis, I would have. I, I don't know. Oh no, that. you you would rather have had uh, Miles Turner. Miles Turner is the better of the two. Then I would just take Miles Turner, and I wouldn't even need him be because then I got the height and everything. Like I mean, I, I mean, I get just like hero, the fourth best player in the league. So like. Yeah, and then everyone's just relegated to playing <laughs> around. Miles Embiid Turner is like lose. maybe top thirty, <laughs> and then and then we and then we're relegated to playing around and beating. We lose. We do need another star, but what I feel is we need someone who can become a breakout star, like Andrew I mean, you've Wiggins. Developed like in these multiple players playoffs. like that. You develop uh-huh. multiple players like that. If there's an organization who's going to find a random dude who's going to be good, it's going to be the Miami Heat. But like Max Struess, case in point. Right, but you don't have way. a you don't like your team is old, and you don't have a star, and you have a piece where you can like convince a team, like if Towns asked out, I don't think he would. You could convince the the Timberwolves for something. Don't but like, do I, it. I would, they yeah. look, I would your, your best shot really. Your best shot is either Bradley Beal or Zach Levine. That's the, I would take Zach Levine. Unless, exactly. unless Katie asks out, that's I'm it. enjoying the weather. Exactly. I know we've been talking for the heat about like an hour now. I don't know if that's what, what we've been trying to do with this conversation, mm-hmm. but let me just like let me get my final thoughts on this. Uh, Pat Riley isn't going to have Jimmy Butler come to Miami just to bring back his old, like, pain in the ass teammate 
Carl Anthony Towns down to Miami like a couple of years later. That just ain't oh, going to yeah, happen. Oh, yeah, that is a good point. Him and Cat did not get along. Mm-hmm. No. Well, regard- that is a uh, – it's going to just be interesting and we'll definitely pay attention and document it. And obviously don't forget there is a draft coming up unless it's a 2000 draft. There's going to be some playmakers who can also make the, uh, make a difference for these teams, but back to the finals itself and talking about the keys to victory and what each team needs to do to come out on top as the champion. But first go with the Celtics. As we talked about, they've had, they have had some bad luck with the injury bug. But when things are afloat, this is a good team. And can they win four against this Warriors team? Can you have Jalen Brown have a stellar game like he did in um, in the conference, have a couple of stellar games like he did in the conference semis? Al Horford with that old man energy and giving it all he's got. Can he do something? Jason Tatum texting Kobe. And um, he's finally willed a team to the NBA Finals. Uh, Marcus Smart, if he gets 24 shots a game again, can he make more than eight? Lots of things to think about and consider. But how can the Celtics, when it's all said and done, win four games against this Warrior team? Uh, They can't, in my opinion. Or if they can, stop turning the ball over. That'll be a big, that'll be a big help. Your star player turns the ball over seven times in what, two games? Bro, come on. Like, nah, you got to do better than that. I don't know what they're averaging the turnovers right now, but they got to do much better than that. Um, Hot take, physical, very, very, very physical paint battle between Draymond Green and Grant Williams. That's what I see going down. Um, I see them starting with Devon Looney. Um, so, if well. anything, huh? He's been playing pretty well. So I, I think they're going to start with Ron Looney. And it, it, the Celtics would have to keep Robert Williams out of foul trouble. Um, Somebody said that earlier. I don't know who said that, but credit to that person. They're going to have to keep Robert Williams out of foul trouble, contain Steph Curry to less than 26 points, contain Clay, and stop Andrew Wiggins from getting another 20-point double-double. Like, they're going to have to keep Jordan Poole down. And all this is going on, and Otto Porter is still sitting on the bench. Is like, Otto you know playing? what I'm saying? Oh. Like, huh? Has he been playing? He was injured for a couple games last yes. series, but I think he's coming back. Yes. You know what um, I'm saying? And oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let, me, let me just finish wrapping it up. Um, they need to keep half of that bad bench off the court. That's basically how Boston will win. Like, Pritchard, you don't want Pritchard in a game with Golden State. You don't want that. You you don't know. Like, against depleted Miami team, put Pritchard in. Against a healthy Golden State, I don't know about all that. I think the answer to the Celtics winning this series is ball denial. And um, and just basically just really strict, like, three-point defense in the sense that when you watch the Warriors play, they rely heavily on Steph and uh, Clay just basically running around the court like crazy until one of them Close. finally gets around a screen and gets open. But um, the Celtics are a unique, like, defensive team where, that, I mean, they're almost all elite defenders. And so, I mean, like, if you have people who are constantly just, like, boxing in Clay and Steph and just not letting them get the ball, but even if they do, like, making them take really uncomfortable shots, which is basically – what the 2016 Cavs did to the Warriors, which was they just like really just played physical as hell with Steph and Clay and just made them so uncomfortable taking those jump shots. I mean, I think that's your best bet because, I mean, I would love to have, I would love to see Wiggins or Poole actually take over one of these games and and win one of these games for them, but I don't see it happening. So I think if you make Clay and Steph uncomfortable, the Celtics have a real shot to winning, I mean, most of these games. Mm. And Clay's not the 2016 um, Clay either. No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a double, I'm a double back on your 2016 comment. I think they they learn from that though. I, that that's what makes this Warrior team a bit scary, and they still chucking up at will. You know what I'm saying? And true, Steph, but this is their first series without KD. I mean, I guess their first like finals without KD since that. So I mean, like we'll see if they can implement what they learned. It's true. 
Steph Curry had what two games with eleven rebounds in the last series. Like if, like I don't know, Steph Curry is in the paint a lot more than people assume he is. Like so, yeah, it's a very valid statement. If you watch the game of Golden State when Steph can't get that three, he's gonna drive it, and like led a lot of the times he's gonna pull up a crazy layup for like going. a year. What happened? He was like one of the leaders in points in the paint, like right up there with like Giannis and Embiid and LeBron for like multiple years. Like, it, like, but yeah, he's up there, but it's a stat that no one's highlighting. But like, they're not talking about that. He shoots so much. He shoots so many threes that they're not looking at that shit. Um, but yeah, I think they learned from that 2016. I think you could apply pressure, but I don't think, I don't think the Celtics have enough pressure perimeter wise to contain them and we know for a fact you can put hot Horford on Steph Curry Steph is going to shoot over big man all day all well, the thing day. is does Golden State really have the the answers on the wing if Boston is clicking like Wiggins no, is going to cover I mean, Wiggins is going to I mean Gary cover. Payton's coming back he is yeah I mean what's what I heard is that he's going to I saw I don't know series. which game though he's coming oh. back for Bro, Wiggins can Wiggins can drive the ball. Yeah. That's like we forget that his comparisons coming out of college. Well, no, we were talking about like perimeter LeBron. defense. Yeah, right perimeter now, wise, though, like he's gonna he's gonna guard defense. Tatum. Oh, and, who, and he's guarding. Gonna, you're gonna put Clay on Brown. I will put, Clay can no, guard Brown. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Wiggins on Brown, and Clay can guard Brown, but he's a step slower than he was before his injury. So they're gonna they're kind of gonna abuse that. Take advantage of that, but I would put Wiggins on Brown because I think that's a Wiggins. I I'm, I think is a little shorter than Brown. But I'm not, I'm not I'm not fully sure, but that's going to be a pretty good physical matchup. Um, as far as Tatum, Tatum's like he's a power forward. Like I don't know. Like you just you just keep Draymond on either him or uh, Robert Williams, whoever's playing center at the time. And I think I think I don't know. I think this. I think I don't think it's going to be as like. Competitive. I, I, I definitely. I don't see a gold seven. I don't see. Gold well, seven I was just all. trying to say that I think the Warriors are going to win. But the question, you know, that our that our host asked was, what were the Celtics' keys to victory? So I was thinking, mm-hmm. if the Celtics have a chance of winning, that's how it would have to happen. But they I don't see it happening. But that's that's what I run. think it is. <laughs> it's they have to. Bar, it's a combination of both what you said. Bar, he's right. They they've been really sloppy with their turnovers. They need both of their wing guys to check in, and they need to be healthy. Like if we don't like if if Robert Williams and E can hold up and whatever the fuck is going on with Marcus Smart's ankle and nobody else gets hurt, they're probably in a better shape. But I don't think they can. They're gonna beat this Golden State team if they're not at full strength and they're not playing essential. Like like Jason Tatum has been really good, but he's also had some really bad games in these in these playoffs. So it's not like you know he's the super consistent guy. So fresh faces, you're a Spurs fan, right? You you remember that 2013 finals where in game seven where LeBron James and Dwayne Wade just took over and just like smacked down the Spurs. The one where Ray Allen tra- Ray, uh, Ray traveled or ga- game six is where he traveled. I'm talking about game seven where yeah, okay. the, where the, yeah, yeah, where James and Wade just like took over the whole game and then just beat mm-hmm. down the Spurs. Right. Jay, Jalen. About- so yeah. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum basically have to replicate those types of performances every game this series in order to stand a chance. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they gotta be fan. Batman and Batman, like all, se- all series. Literal fa- Batman and Superman. They've got to be Batman and Superman. I you, mean, Tatum, you, they have, look, they're, they're, uh, if they both are not average like 30 in this series, twins. they have a chance. I think they better not look like the wonder twins. And if you don't know about the wonder <laughs> twins, <laughs> that movie just got canceled, can only turn so, into yeah. water based things. So somebody's going to be a puddle of water on the floor and it better not be, Jason Tatum, because these last seven games, Jimmy Brown's been playing his fucking ass off. Like, I can't even deny it. Like, the boy, like, like the man's busting his fucking ass. And when he drives in the paint, he's he's pretty much making that shit. You know what I'm saying? Not a, not a solid three-point shooter like that. He could do better. Tatum is taking a lot of risky shots as well. He's playing a lot of hero ball. Um, he's got to trust the team. He has a, a Kobe more. Bryant and armband on. Of course, he's playing hero ball. He was playing hero ball before he put the armband on. Yeah, huh? they need better end game execution. Like if you, yes, I was good. Like you can't be sloppy like you did against. Uh... Bro, 
in six. Him and Tatum, um, him and him and Brown had great field goal percentages and still lost the game. Both yeah, scored I mean, you, you, you need more and you need to get uh they just stopped scoring. They literally stopped scoring. I watched the highlights. They just they just said, Well, whatever. Let Miami get this one. Go ahead, give us the like that's the problem with the Celtics. Like you said, they need better end game execution. All right, all right. And as for Golden State themselves, what has for stuff that hasn't been mentioned already, and whether it's a matter of them putting a beat down on this Celtics team that some people may feel, or if they have their struggles and it's competitive, what can Golden State do to win their fourth NBA Finals within this deck within a decade? Golden State. Yeah, Golden State's gonna win. Just, just being I mean, Golden State that's going to do it? No, no, not quite, not quite. I mean, obviously, you know, the coach has been here a lot, uh, you know, between his coaching days, or between his, his playing days and now his coaching days. Obviously, you're going for core, his ninth ring, his ninth. Right? I mean, the core has been here, you know, let's just be their six finals in a row um, for all three of like, Draymond, Clay, and Steph, um, as far as, you know, making it into the playoffs, go to the finals. Yep, yep. Um, I mean, this is about everyone else on Golden State. I mean, is Andrew Wiggins going to get shook by the moment? Is, you know, Jordan Poole going to get shook by the moment? These are young dudes. I mean, is um, is Kevon Looney going to play the way he played in the Mavericks series? I mean, Steph, Clay, and Draymond can't win the series by themselves. They need everyone else to, you know, be on point. So if those dudes, like, like just, like, go, like, 0 for 11 or have, like, really bad games, like, the, the core three can't overcome that. So, I mean, for me, I think the the keys to victory is, you know, just making sure like people like Wiggins and and Poole just stay consistent throughout the series. I, I don't agree. I don't agree. I believe that um, the big three can overcome it, sadly enough. I really do. Um, but because uh, Draymond needs to stay out of foul trouble, but he needs to stay aggressive. He needs to stay out of foul trouble, and he needs to stay out of anything that can get him um, uh, technicals uh, and and uh, refs to get mad at him, which we've seen throughout yeah, his entire exactly. career. He needs to stay away from any flagrant, anything that can keep him from playing a game. Um, and the big three can come out of it because every you now and again, Spar's going to be in his ear every game too. Yeah, of course, but once you know, once they start getting good, once they start rolling out of nowhere, Draymond ain't take a single shot all game, scuffing. You, they can. Their big three can literally win without one without one of their three ever making a bucket. That's why I believe they can overcome this. Marcus Smart, I will. I believe will fall under the pressure. Um, don't know which one of the two, Jordan Poole or Andrew Wiggins, is going to crack. One of the two might not perform. It might be Looney. You never know. He might just get ran down all night. Um. Al Horford's old. He really wants this. I don't doubt him in this moment. Like, I don't doubt him in this moment. I feel like he's going to give his best basketball, fail and retire. Um, I don't know. Like, Golden State, just I feel like they got it. Like, who who's the big three on Boston? You know what I'm saying? If if Tatum and, and, and Brown get hurt and go smart. down, who's winning the game for them after that? No, I don't. I don't think Mark it's going to be. I don't three. think it's going to be a cakewalk. I, I think each one of these games is going to be close. I don't. I don't. I think blowouts. so too. I really I, do. Think one you make... There's going to be one block. There's going to be one when game it, where where game where two. Hey, hey, we've already placed bets on this podcast. Game you know? two. Fresh faces. Is you gotta. You gotta. Which game is it going to be? Game two. It's. Yeah, it's probably going to be game two. I think. Probably. They, they, game two. Got to make guarantees. We're on the podcast yeah, I think it's right now. It's gonna be game two. Look, did you know this? Get it on recording be, now. No, mm-hmm. you know what? More fresh. It ain't here. I, I, I put down an eight dollar bet on Boston in Game Three. I'm I'm solid on I that. that bet. I took that. I took that. I took that eight. Yes, bet. please. If you could please notate that so we can uh, <laughs> hold each other accountable, that'd be great too. And I got Bars's bet on Game One. I got I got Warriors. He's got Celtics. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Alex, how do you feel about whether, um, 
how do you feel about the Warriors or Celtics coming into it? Uh, who do, how do you think, uh, what do you think is the keys to victory for one to go over the other? Well, I think the only way for Boston to stay in the series and push it to seven or even six for that matter is they got to be tight with the ball. Like Box said, they got to reduce the turnovers. Um, they got to play clean, clean basketball. They got to lock down on the, on, um, on the perimeter. Um, they got to stay attached to the bodies as best they can with like Steph and Clay and Poole. Um, and, you know, block those passing lanes. But um, I fully expect, like Desmond said, I think all games are going to be close. Um, the only blowout would be probably game two if um, if Boston keeps it close or wins, for that matter, because I think that um, Golden State's just too good not to respond any other way. But um, I think that Golden State will probably win in six or seven. But in order for Boston to push it that far, they got to do those things. Solid stuff, solid stuff. Well, with that, why don't we go with our predictions and uh, let the conversation branch out from there. I, as well, I agree with Desmond. I think it'll be more competitive. And I'm going to go with the Warriors in six. I do think with their team, with the, especially if we have a returning Gary Payton in the second and Andre Iguodala and everybody playing at their highest level, and especially with the resurgence of Clay Thompson playing much better, I think we can see the Warriors make a push. But I do think the home court advantage would help Boston in games three and four, uh, especially, and it might even be a 2-2 series going back to Golden State in game five. But in there, I do think that the Warriors could take the momentum. And uh, again, when their fourth NBA finals within the last 10 years, um, I think it's officially four. It would be four NBA finals in seven years and clearly an ultimate dynasty growing if, and it could be continue as these players are still pretty youthful. They're not, you're not too concerned about their ages yet. They're still playing at a high level and it just shows, you know, replace, replace KD and you put in Jordan Poole and uh, Andrew Wiggins and stuff like that. It just shows how damn good of a coach Steve Kerr is. And um, we can see why he's soon going to have a ring for every single finger on his, on his, uh, on his, both of his hands. So that's how I see this going warriors in six. And I just want to put my bias. I just don't want to see any Boston team win a goddamn thing. So I'll put that bias there. (laughs) All right. Who wants to go next with their prediction? Um, I'm going to go Warriors in five. I said that earlier. I'm going to double down on it again. I've been, I think I've been doing a lot of in sixes throughout this whole um, playoffs. And after the last play, after the last series, my hopes have been crushed. But I'm going with Miami in five. I really want to pick the sweep. Shout out to my boy, Jordy. But um, I'm going to go Miami game five, game two blowout by the Warriors. I mean, Miami. I'm going to go Golden State game, uh, Golden State in five. Blowout game to Warriors. Okay. All right. I guess I'll jump in next. Um, Man, I'm going back and forth on this one. Uh, Warriors, definitely. Uh, We already already talked about the bets earlier. Um, In my brain, I feel like. What what you got for the game to blow out? I'll I'll, I'll get you that one in a second. Hold on. on. in my head, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Warriors in five, but you know, the basketball, um, just like fan in me wants to say Warriors in seven, because I just want to see more games. But I'm gonna go firm on Warriors in five. I just think that what it's really gonna come down to at the end of the day, between two teams that talent-wise, you know, aren't too far apart from each other, it's gonna come down to execution. The Warriors have been in these situations before. That's a big deal. They're used to dealing with the press. They're used to dealing with the, the days off, the adjustments, uh, knowing how to handle the the home. I mean, the the away crowds in the NBA finals. They've done this before. Did it in Toronto. They did it in Cleveland. Um, in the I, I, finals. Yeah, they just, they, they, they've been here before. And so I think that at the end of the day, the, the execution is going to come down to it. In these, in these games that are going to be close, we're talking about a, a difference between like, you know, maybe like four or five possessions. I trust the Warriors to get those four or five possessions. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it went seven, but I'm sticking to Warriors and five. 
All right. All right. What do you say, Buck? I uh, Golden State in five. Um, look, the, the Celtics made it. It took them four tries to make it to the finals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, they, they made it. Uh, that drought. I, I don't know. Uh, look, they're, they're just a better team. I don't trust Boston to be healthy. Um, look, for where they were, where they started this year, the fact that they made the finals is like a fucking, ma- uh, fucking miracle to their, their, their perseverance and their coaching. Like, but I mean, it hurts to vote against Boston because there's like one, no, one of, one of my favorite or Spurs in the last couple of years on that team. Um, look, White. it's why it's why I I rooted for Toronto when they were playing Golden State. It, I mean, even though fuck Kawhi Leonard, but like Danny Green was on that team. <laughs> that Danny Green was there. Listen, oh, um, I'm mean, sorry to interrupt. You, I just want to say, I hope you get rewarded. Say this, just really quick second. It is not hard to vote against root against Boston. I mean, <laughs> not at all. that is oh, no, no. City, I'm only, it's only it's only hard. That is a I city that had, right. had Look, that has had no. all four of their major sports teams win a championship in the last like 20 years. <laughs> as since, far as I'm concerned, they need to just go away. Just since, go away, Boston. No one cares about you. Since Tim anymore. Duncan That's retired, the best the best highlight in Spurs basketball is since Tim Duncan retired was when Derek White posterized Paul Millsap playing the Nuggets like three years ago. <laughs> that was like the best highlight we've had. So. You know, you got a soft spot for him. I also need Boston to lose so we can keep it tied at 17. So, they oh, yeah, that's right. That. They would they would take that over on a historical standpoint. Huh. They've only won one in this 35 game. years, and we've won eight. He <laughs> he <laughs> winning. Well, so, but how do you feel though of branching out on that, Alex, with your prediction? You clearly want Boston to win. How do you think they will? Uh, sorry, yeah. you want Boston to lose. How do you think they will ultimately lose? I I give Boston a little more benefit of the doubt. I mean, you know, health is always the caveat, like Fox said. But I'll I have them going six. I think that Warriors are clearly the better better team, better well oiled machine. They're more comfortable in this situation. This is brand new territory for Boston. Um, but I think they will push it six just because I have a little more faith in them being able to take a game in Golden State and um um serve you know serve at home as well all right excellent I, stuff excellent stuff gentlemen um first before yeah, we say final words quick. yeah yeah what's up to add real quick um that it would take a freak accident for golden state to that way that's, that's all i'm saying you know, it, i don't want to it, call it really would be free accidents before <laughs> it, it would take uh i don't know uh, you mean Clay Thompson, it? like going down in the ah, finals? Ah, my head. Ah, I don't want to hear this kind of talk. The TV contracts, the TV contracts do better when there's more games. It it, it really usually in the NBA Scott the better Foster team be there, does win. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, if we want to we want to throw any conspiracies out to start, you heard it here first. If we need a Celtics are twelve and zero in the postseason when Scott Celtics. Foster coaches their game. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Celtics, I have to say, Celtics I haven't looked at down. the uh, officials' report yet. I don't know when he's he's scheduled Celtics to play, but I know this. <laughs> All right, Celtics where can down. we find you guys? Bars, one more time. Tell us where we can find uh, you. You can find me on Instagram at Insomniacs and S O M N Y A K Z Insomniacs. No sleeping, baby. You could also find me on SoundCloud, um, Free Flow Bars, and no Facebook for you. How about you, Desmond? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, the podcast is called Independent Thought. You can find that on um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, we talk politics pretty consistently. Uh, that is that is the that is the name of the show. So if you're interested in figuring out what's going on in the world, come check us out. Excellent, Mr. Renelio. Where can we find you? Uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um... Yeah, and I got my website, alexandercalifornia.com. I'm doing a lot of murals right now, a lot of commission work, um, plenty of stuff rolling into the fall, so just keep at it. All right, and David Bach, one more time. No, I do. I'm Fresh Faces New Ideas. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Fresh Faces New Ideas. You can find me on Twitter at Faces Ideas. I yelled into the ether about politics because it's fun, and um, sometimes I like to be depressed about yelling about it. Uh, But I'm really smart, and I know what I'm talking about, and you should listen to me more. 
Excellent stuff, gentlemen. Well, we will bid you all a fair do. We all agreed we will check back in after game five. Hopefully it's 2-2, two, two, but maybe if it's a 3-1 to one, um, advantage, we'll obviously get into that. But bottom line, hopefully it's not a sweep either. But I... Pretty confident there'll be a game five. But uh, bars, you have one more thing with your hand up. If we checking in, if we checking in after game five, we checking in to say congratulations to the. Well, you said Golden after State game Warriors. five or before game five? Yeah. Which uh, one? Oh, excuse me. Sorry. This will be before game five, so we'll be a okay. uh, two-two. Okay. Two. Yeah, semantics just to make that clear. So after we game won. four, we, we will be checking in. There will be Unless a game four, no matter what. Get swept. <laughs> yes, so that would uh, be awkward too. But uh, regardless, I'll be here to collect my eight dollar bet from bars. <laughs> hey, listen, talk to me about round two. Who's getting blown out? I got the Celtics getting blown out in round two. I got ten cash on that. You mean game two? But yes, okay, round two. Sorry, what round two. I did so well you think Celtics that. are getting blown out in game two? Yes, because right, they're going to win. Define blown one. out. Like you've been getting beat by more than ten points. Wait, I'm and then also the definition points. for ten points. Because- oh, more than twenty points. You're like you also if you're, doing, if you're doing yeah. a 10-point thing, if you're doing a 10-point thing, is it 10 points because they're like fouling with the you know the game? No, hold penalty. on, stop, stop, oh, stop. You know stop. What? Hold on, hold right. on, fresh. Let's hold go up, 10 man. plus. Let's go 10 plus. Let's go 10 see, plus. Now, so see, over like, under 10 and a, so over 10 and a half points. That's over what you'll 10 say. and a half. I'll, I'll how much we you said 10 bucks? 10 bucks. A point, a dollar I'll a point. A dollar a point. A dollar a point could be big. Golden State lost by 55 points once this 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 postseason. I'll take that bet. So <laughs> how much is our game one bet? Eight dollars. All right. So that's eight dollars. And the game three bet is eight dollars. So okay, okay, we good. All right, cool. We have that notated. Put that in the chat. Wait, game three, we bet on game three? Yeah, we bet on game. Th- I said Boston was definitely <laughs> winning game three. You said you would take that bet. I'll take that bet. Yes. I gotta write it down. <laughs> All right, cool. This is going to be fun. Nothing's better than seeing people win or lose money but yep we'll check in after game four and then we'll uh have some fun after that have a great night gentlemen see you guys it was always a good time guys peace yeah